Welcome to the Creative Play and Podcast Network. Join us as we review our favorite RPGs, collectible card games, MMOs, video games, PC games, and bring up interesting topics and things that we'd like to share with everyone. Sit back and enjoy the show. Hi, this is Kelly, a.k.a. Trixie from Ragnarok and Roll, a sign to Ragnarok story, and Tilda Wimblewick from D&D Journey of the Fifth Edition. First off, I would just like to say thank you to everyone for listening to our varied adventures, as well as for rating us on iTunes and RPGpodcast.com. If you haven't rated us yet, we would greatly appreciate it if you could. And if you're looking for more ways to support our efforts, we are now on Patreon, a great site where you can help us continue making more podcasts, as well as some special surprises for our patrons. If you can, please look us up at www.patreon.com slash cppn. Every little bit helps. And again, thank you for listening. Welcome back to the Creative Play and Podcast RPG A Day Challenge. We are on August the 24th. What is the game you are most likely to give to others? Ooh, that's a good question. Well, it depends on the type of person. If, well, um, I might be tempted to say Star Wars. The Star Wars role-playing game. Because Mm. you can give the starter set. The starter set comes with everything you need. Um, and it's a little more, I guess, user-friendly user friendly. Yeah. for a new player um, or a role player who's never played it before. Mm, the, who's, the, who's never seen the narrative dice. So by Star cool. Wars, do you mean Edge of Empire, Age of Rebellion? Or Scum of course, and the, Villainy! Okay, so Edge of Empire? Yeah. Okay, because that's a fun one, the whole uh, Long Empire. Arm of the Hut adventure. Yeah. We had fun playing that Timo one. the Hut. Timo the Hut. Mm-hmm. Mashuta. Mashuta. On uh, Tatooine. Mm-hmm. The uh-huh. crate flame. The crate fang. Ascada, the mm-hmm. Twilight bounty hunter. Mm-hmm. Badass. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The Wookie. Mm-hmm. It was definitely a fun starter set, and I love how they made the portfolios mm-hmm. to completely explain how to play the game, how it can take the scary narrative dice and, and twiddle it down to a very, very easy mm-hmm. to easy for a first time GM. Yeah, easy for a player. Star Wars. Mm. See, I would actually go with something different, but you're you're right about that one. So what would you give? I would actually give them the Force and Destiny starter set for Star Wars. Oh, but you'd still do Star Wars. Still do Star Wars, I yeah. You meant you'd As starter sets that. go, it's D and D most most of the folks I know who RPG play D and D but That's like the I think it set the standard. Yeah. Or a standard, mm-hmm. you know. It was the one of the first, mm-hmm. so but I would Not definitely say I would do the Force and Destiny one because I know so many folks with the Star Wars games are excited to play Jedi. And the Force and Destiny starter set does a good job of showing you how Jedi characters should be made and played. See, I'm one of those people that I don't care if I play Jedi or not. Because mm-hmm. you're all scummy and villainy that way. <laughs> you're either Imperial or you're scum. Exactly. Because that's the kind of girl I'm married. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Rebel scum. Well, probably more like uh, scum, but... <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, guys. So, uh, pretty much we're unanimous on the Fantasy Flight starter sets. We got the Edge of Empire, and we got the Force and Destiny one. Which, by the way, they also have the uh, Force Awakens one. So far, we haven't played it yet. Not too horribly impressed with the pretense of it, because it doesn't really add much to the game, which is why there's not going to be an extra book for it. But it does add more flavor text, and you get to, you know, meet Captain Phasma in it. Yeah. No, no biggie. No biggie? Uh, I certainly hope that her role in the next movie is is more expanded, because... (laughs) Yes. Like... Nah. She spent too much time in the trash, trash receptacle. Trash compactable. Yeah. Yep. Alrighty, guys. That's August the 24th. What is the game you are most likely to give to others? And by the way, the starter sets are really well priced and have everything you need to play in them. Exactly. Which is nice. And you can walk through beginning GM and beginning players through mm-hmm. how to play it. And great for kids. I think it's like age 8 and up or something like that. I don't know. Yeah, something like that. But, yep. Yeah, that's our answer. Alright, guys. Like usual, thanks for listening. On the battlefield, I'm a warrior, ready to kill or be killed. I've defeated orcs from the north, sent Kandorian demon spawns back to the depths, and drank with Sumerian heroes. But when I get back from a hard day of disemboweling my enemies, 
I enjoy nothing more than to open my castle doors and find a dungeon crate as my reward for blood well spilled. Designed for role players and tabletop gamers, Dungeon Crate is a monthly subscription box service with a treasure hoard of loot you can use on or off the battlefield. Miniatures, dice, tokens, coins, maps, modules, terrain pieces, handcrafted items, RPG jewelry, and more are yours for only a few gold per month. You even get a digital crate along with a physical one as an added bonus. So what say you? Are you ready for postal glory? Oh boy. DungeonCrate.com. Let the adventure begin. Thank you for listening to the Creative Play and Podcast Network. And feel free to enjoy our other shows, such as D&D Journey of the Fifth Edition and Scion Ragnarok and Roll, a Scion hero to Ragnarok story. Thank you for listening.